Donnamore, maiden speech. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker, for calling me to make my maiden speech during this important debate on the King's speech that sets out the agenda of change that this country has voted for and this Labour government will deliver. I congratulate all new members on their maiden speeches in today's debate. It is the honour of my life to represent my home of Hastings and Rye. Madam Deputy Speaker, I know that you are very familiar with all that we have to offer visitors in Hastings and Rye, especially our famous fish and chips. In recent years, our fishermen have worked hard to keep our local fishing industry going in the most difficult of circumstances, and they will always have my full support. In Hastings and Rye, we host the World Crazy Golf Championship every year, and we also host the world record for the gathering of the most number of pirates in any one place. <laughs> a record we try and beat every year on Pirate Day. <coughs> While one of my predecessors representing Rye in this house was himself a real pirate, <laughs> I'm relieved to say that that cannot be said for many of my predecessors. Sally Ann Hart worked extremely hard for our constituency, <coughs> and I want to thank her particularly for her work in support of women and children fleeing domestic abuse, a legacy I hope to build on. Yeah. Another issue we wholeheartedly agree on is in speaking out about the unacceptable levels of abuse and intimidation that too many members of this House have faced, particularly women. The plaque of the late Joe Cox is facing us and that of Sir David Amos behind me, and that is a constant and tragic reminder of where this can end. I also want to pay tribute to my Labour predecessor, Michael Foster, he is known well in our area for helping so many residents and being a passionate champion for Hastings and Rye during his time in this house. Many members will also know our area for a very famous battle that took place in 1066. <laughs> Historians may still be arguing about where exactly it took place, but it's safe to say that it has cemented our place in the history books. Since then, we've continued to play our part in British history from being immortalised in the novel The Ragged Trousered Philanthropists to being the birthplace of television. But perhaps what defines us most is our community spirit, underpinned by our volunteers and our charities that do so much. Our calendar is full of carnivals and festivals, from Jack in the Green to bonfire nights. These are only made possible by volunteers who give up their time to give back to the community and raise money for our local charities. It is also volunteers who maintain and protect so many of our amazing public spaces, from Hastings Country Park to Rye Harbour Nature Reserve and Camber Sands. There are also some points of our history that we would rather forget, like the unveiling of a certain stone tablet in Hastings during the 2015 general election campaign by my friend, the Right Honourable Member for Doncaster North. That stone may have been consigned to history, but I know my Right Honourable Friend will be back very soon to unveil some new green energy infrastructure, and I know that will be more long-lasting than the stone. <laughs> While we've often found ourselves at the centre of historical events, we have not always felt all of the benefits. Our road and our rail infrastructure are stuck in the past. We may be a similar distance from London as Brighton, but our train line takes twice as long. We lie at the end of the A21, a road that has been described as the least developed road in the southeast of England. As any driver will tell you, we have the worst potholes in the country. And our water infrastructure is also failing us. Southern water has a lot to answer for in my constituency, dumping record <laughs> levels of sewage along our coastline from St Leonard's to Hastings, Fairlight, Pep, Camber Sands and Winchelsea Beach. Some sewage has even come into people's homes and gardens in my constituency. And when the water pipes have failed, we've also faced major flooding in homes and the town centre and been left without water supply for days and days on end. I'm pleased to see the Water Special Measures Bill as part of this King's speech, which will start to clean up our water industry. The cratered state of our roads and crumbling water infrastructure is symbolic of how we have been too often forgotten by Westminster. Life expectancy is lower than the national average, a trend that has got worse during the last 14 years. You wait longer for an ambulance in my constituency than anywhere in the southeast of England. 
and the situation is particularly bad in our villages and our rural areas like Winchelsea, where you wait on average 45 minutes when having a stroke or a heart attack. That is why this government's plans to cut NHS waiting times cannot come soon enough. As a seaside destination, our area has benefited hugely from tourism, but we are also at the sharp end of the housing crisis, with spiralling rents and simply not enough homes being built. Too many of my constituents are left in poor quality rental accommodation, whether by southern housing or by private landlords. That is why I so welcome the measures in this King's speech to get Britain building again, to build more homes and give all renters more protections. This government has a mission to break down the barriers to opportunity and it is sorely needed in my constituency where almost 40% of children are growing up in poverty. Over half our young people are leaving school without the essential qualification of a grade four in English and maths. How we treat our children says a lot about us as a society. Before joining this house, I had the privilege of seeing this up close in many different countries as an aid worker with Save the Children. It is always children who suffer the most in war and conflict. I have sat with young mums in Yemen holding their starving babies, so hungry that they don't have the energy to cry. And I've heard the harrowing stories from Rohingya women who have fled ethnic cleansing and sexual violence at the hands of the Myanmar military. I always promised those women that I would share their stories with the world and my time in this place will be no different. We are at a time in history where we see more children growing up in conflict than at any time before. There has rightly been much focus devoted recently to the appalling events in Israel and Palestine, and there too it is children bearing the brunt of war. We must redouble our efforts to bring about peaceful solutions to all of these conflicts, and we must remember that all the global issues we face, from climate change to migration, can only be solved by working across borders with our international allies and through strong multilateral institutions like the United Nations. Just as I've been so inspired by the women I've met living in some of the toughest places on earth, I also wanted to acknowledge some of the women whose shoulders I stand on closer to home. Madam Deputy Speaker, I know I speak for many on this side of the House when I say how much we miss your sister, the late, great Baroness Margaret Macdonough. She always had such wise counsel to offer for us, and it is the reason that many of us sit here today. I also want to thank my family and friends for all the support they've given me in getting me to this place. Madam Deputy Speaker, this King's speech will begin to deliver the change and renewal that Hastings and Rye voted for. I look forward to working hard for all my constituents across Hastings and Rye and delivering that much needed change. Yeah. Yeah.